All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that exciting tale of whaling days in 1858 and the hunt for treasure. Our friends have successfully weathered the eruption of the volcano on secret Galto Island and have captured Ezekiel Kipp, the old man who caused them so much trouble. But the volcano tremors started a rock slide which completely covered the site of the diamond mine, which has been the object of the cruise. So Captain Dalton with Ezra Grange, Sue and Johnny and old Dickon have set sail for Ascension Island in the mid-Atlantic to purchase explosives with which to remove the debris. But before they can make port at Georgetown on the North Shore, Captain Dalton spies through his glass a strange ship at anchor on the West Coast and the palatial home of a wealthy family on the island in flames. He immediately springs into action, shouting, Avast! Avast, Mr. Nicholson, at the helm! Keep a bow forward until we get close to the shore. Then swing your helm to starboard, or we'll tack down on him and take him by surprise. Can you see any clear through the glass, Captain? Aye, Dickon. There's splashes of gunfire near the beach at the edge of the clearing. What do you think's happening, Captain Dalton? As I said, there's a wealthy family of English folks who've come to stay on Ascension Island for their health. They're fine people. I've met them often when making port at Georgetown. Who would set their house on fire, Captain? Well, as I see it, some raider who knows their wealth and the value of the plate and art treasures in their home has anchored his ship offshore and gone into plunder. But, Captain, with the British garrison right around the point of Georgetown, ain't they taking a blooming long chance? Oh, it's a long chance, matey, a long chance! Aye, Dickon, it is a chance indeed. But some of the blooming swabs who sail the seas will stop at nothing. My guess is that they plan to strike quick and weigh anchor before the authorities come overland to investigate the smoke. Gee, and we've spoiled their plans, haven't we, Captain? I hope we have. All hands on deck. Stand by for a skirmish. Privateers to starboard. All hands on deck. Captain Gordon, lend me your glass a spell, will you? Hi, right, Mr. Wainwright, but what is it? I think I know that, Buck. Aye, it is the very one. The jigger. As nasty a tramp as ever put out of Boston. Dirk Briscoe's ship. Dirk Briscoe? That sea rat. Blow me down, Captain. Can it be him? It's him. You may lay to that, Captain. Who's Dirk Briscoe, Captain Galton? He's a trader in copra and pearls and shells, Sue. He's usually in the South Seas. But when his luck is bad, he'll enter some new waters where he's not known and raid whatever he can. That bloody pirate. I've often wanted a chance at him. Are you ready, men? There may be some fight in the head. Are you all ready for it? Aye, sir. We're all with you. Good, good. Mr. Muscala, Mr. Jowett, have three boats let down and be ready to go ashore. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Nicholson, put her hard to starboard. Bring her up hard by the jigger. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Wainwright, you take eight men and board that ship as soon as we get near enough. Aye, aye, Captain. And our five men will stay aboard here in case they try any funny business. The rest of the men will follow with me and Muscala and Jowett. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, 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 sir. Captain Dalton, I heard the noise above as I was working in my cabin. What's wrong? A privateer raiding a home ashore, Mr. Grange. We're going to stop him. Are you sure it's a raid? We're close enough to see it plainly now. See those flashes of gunfire? The privateer's men have surrounded the house and are firing at it. Batten down the edge, Captain. Why, they fire the brush around the house and the stables. Ah, make the lovers walk the plank. But isn't this pretty dangerous, Captain? Not overly, sir. Our men are better disciplined than his crew, and most of our men have been armed now. But what about Sue and Johnny here? Oh, let us go ashore, please. We want to go with you, Captain. Absolutely not. Well, frankly, Mr. Grange, I think they'll be safer ashore. There'll be more of our men there and plenty of shelter for them. While on deck, there may be some hand-to-hand fighting with the other ship. Well, well, very well, Captain. But I'm going with you. Captain, they're almost up to the other ship, and they haven't sighted us yet ashore. A vast. There's a lover aboard the ship there that sees us. Ahoy, it's time to act. In the boat. Right, Swing the arm. Float away. Mr. Wainwright, Mr. Wainwright, remember, board the jigger as soon as the Paul Parrot gets close enough. Aye, aye, sir. We'll have her in our hands in no time. All right, men. Lean on those oars. Ashore. The blooming swabs ashore are so busy firing on that house that they, they still haven't seen us, Captain. Ah, take them by surprise, matey. Ah. Aye. Aye, but men, keep your guns and muskets ready. The moment one of them turns about and sees the Paul Parrot at anchor alongside their own ship, they'll sight us too and possibly start shooting. I'm worried about Sue and Johnny, Captain. Don't worry about us, Mr. Grange. We wouldn't miss being along for anything. Not if we could help it, Ezra. Yeah, that's the trouble. You're both always too anxious to be in the middle of things to be safe. 
Now, as soon as we get ashore, we're going to retire into the trees at the side of the clearing. If there's any shooting, we're going to stay as far away from it as we can. Ezra, Captain Dalton said the leader of these raiders... Dirk Briscoe is his name, Sue. Yes, Dirk Briscoe. Well, the captain said he was a copra trader. What's copra, Ezra? Well, copra is the dried meat of coconuts. You see, they get coconut oil from it, and since there are so many coconut palms in the South Sea Islands, it's one of their most important products, and many ships deal in very little else. Well, I always thought it was the same as cobra, Mr. Gray. Oh, no, Johnny. The cobra is a very poisonous snake that lives in India. We're in the surf. Beach the boats, men. Beach the boats. Blow me down, Captain. Look, they see us. So they do, Dickon. Beach them, men. Beach them. Wait. They're still firing on the house, Captain. Mr. Grange, Mr. Grange, you take Sue and Johnny and run for cover. All right, come on, Sue. Yeah. Hurry, I'll take care of you, Captain. Out of the boats, men. We're sighted. Aim your firearms. Cover them all. Stop your firing, you blasted swab. These guns are trained on your backs. Drop your arms and stand up. A Lincoln surprise attack. You dirty built scum will. I said drop your guns. <laughs> That's in store for all of you if you don't surrender. Look, Captain. They're not going to surrender without a shot. Drop to the beach, men. When they start firing, you fire. Wrong fire on the swamp, mate! Swamp! Ah! 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 there, Blast ye. We're outnumbered. We'll lay down arms. Why, well, look. It's Briscoe himself, Captain. Oh, the best you build some rock. So it is. Cease firing, men. Throw down your arms and advance, you swabs. So, it's Captain Dalton, eh? I don't see as how it's any of your business sailing in here and spoiling our party. You smooth-faced sneaking rat. The Stanhopes are our friends, and you are trying to raid their home here. That's my business, looking out for my own mates. Well, there's no harm done now. I thought a fast little raid might be profitable, exciting, and a bit of recreation for my boys. But since you landed at the wrong time, the upper hand is yours. We retire in defeat. And accept your terms. Well, first of all, your lover, you must restore anything you've carried off. Haven't had time to carry anything off. Just burned one of the stables, that's all. No livestock harm. You're paying for that damage. You give me value for the damage done, and I'll let you and your men get back and board your ship. Then I'll notify the garrison at Georgetown. Then it's up to you to save your own skin by keeping ahead of them. How can I pay you for that damage? If I had any gold, I wouldn't be raiding. Is that so? Well, that bag of gold sticking out of your pocket there will cover it nicely, Bisco. Ah! Piece of the bait! Piece of the bait! Ah, you can't take this away, blast you. Reef in your sails, lubber. You're caught in a squall. You'll agree to all terms. It seems you're awful sure yourself. How do you know the men I left on my ship haven't taken yours over out there offshore? Look at the pennons flying at the master of the Paul Parrot. We've met the enemy in their hours. That's what they mean. Blast you. All right, Dalton. Here's a bag of gold to pay for the damage of the Stanhope's property. But you'll pay for this, Dalton. Mark you it well. If I have to chase you over the seven seas from pole to pole, I'll get you in a cove one day and scuttle your blooming ship. Ah, scuttle the ship! Scuttle the ship! Ah. You talk a little more like I can stand, Briscoe. I'll give you a chance to pay me back right now. What do you mean? Get your men over to the beach near their boats so they can go aboard as soon as this little matter is settled. Men, my men, drop all your arms in a pile here at my feet. Retire to the edge of the clearing. But, Captain, sir, what you planning? Never mind, Dick, and I know what I'm doing. Do as I say. Now, retire to the edge of the clearing, men. Briscoe, you and I are going to have a little private battle of our own. So, that's how the wind sets, eh? Dalton, this is a pleasure. Oh, I hope Captain Dalton doesn't get hurt. Oh, he won't get hurt. He's the strongest man I ever saw. He'll take care of Dirk Briscoe, you bet. I don't like this, though. That Dirk looks like the kind of a blackguard I know he is. He's liable to do anything. Go on, Captain. Hit him again. Look at that. Oh, my. He knocked that pirate right flat on his back. That fight won't last much longer. With any other man matched against him, I wouldn't worry about Captain Dalton. But that villain, he might... Look, they're resting all over the ground. They're up on their feet again. Oh, gee, Captain oh. Dalton got hit that time. Captain Dalton, we're with you. Knock him down again. <laughs> what a blow that was. 
Briscoe is lying there on the beach. I hope he's had enough. Ezra! Johnny! Look! That pirate has his hand in his shirt. He's going to pull a gun out. I just know it. Captain, look out. Oh, I'm going to tell him. Captain, look out. He's going to shoot you. Sue, Sue, come back here. Yeah, stop her, Johnny. Sue, oh, no, 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 but not good enough to stop this. Oh, Captain Dalton. Captain Dalton, he's going to shoot. Sue, stand aside. <laughs> you, you swine. You shot the girl. Poor, brave little Sue shot. Is she severely hurt? Captain Dalton will take care of Briscoe. You may lay to that. But no matter what happens to the cowardly privateer, it can never make up for any injury Sue Grange may have received. To find out what our friends are going to do now that this unexpected development has occurred, be sure to listen to the next exciting adventure in The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward. <laughs>